Hello, this is Raphael, and I'm making this video to warn you all of a vicious humor being spread by one of my favorite British pop bands. The Radiohead has this song called Anyone Can Play Guitar, and I thought that anyone could play guitar, including me, so I decided to test out that theory. If you'll see here, I have my uh, Taylor 1998 Walnut Edition guitar, and um, my nice thousand dollar leather sofa, and for good luck, my Radiohead shirt. A few calluses going on, and I know my hands aren't quite mangled enough to be able to do this like the pros, but I'm working on it. And I have a guitar chord dictionary and a songbook, mostly of folk songs, because I'd heard that folk was the easiest type of music to play for a beginning guitarist. So here's an old three chord tune. It only contains three chords, which are C. I make the C by holding the frets like this, and an F, which you're supposed to make by holding the frets like this, but more about that later. And then the third chord is the G chord, which you would hold like this, but I'm playing a weak G and not using the top string at all, so just for express purposes I'm going to hold it like this. Here is my chord C, F. G. Alright, that G sounds a little funky because I didn't mute the top string. The song I'm about to attempt to play is called Play Pigeons. It was written in the 1980s by a guy named Blaze Foley. I don't really care for John Prine's version, so I went back to the source. My favorite version of this song is actually performed by J.T. Van Zandt, the son of uh, another songwriter named Towns Van Zandt, so that's the version that I'm going to try to recreate for you now. Instead of playing the whole chord at once, you're supposed to play it in arpeggios. So the C chord, for the introduction, you play like this. That's bottom string, middle, further to the middle, back down, back down, now up to the top, down, down, back up. And then F chord the same way. G chord. Instead of not playing the bottom string, you don't play the top string. And then back to C chord. I'm going to try to play the intro now. Not bad, right? Actually, that was horrible. There's a couple reasons why that was horrible. First of all, it takes forever to change from C to F. Because look how different these finger positions are. C, you're not making a bar, you're playing an open chord, and you're holding three strings with three fingers and different frets. And now for F, you're taking this top finger and laying it flat across the top, and then holding three strings like this, really stretching your fingers. The second problem is when I make my F, I need to hold my bar across the top frets with like a really flat finger. So it's like I almost have to hold it like this to get all the strings to sound. Because before you worry about which strings you're holding underneath, when you make your bar, you should be able to test your chord by seeing whether they all sound. And you can see there I wasn't distracting myself by trying to hold any other strings, or even pick, and I was just focusing on the bar and I still got it wrong because my first time, my top string was muted. But when I actually play, more commonly, the problem is that this string is muted. This is about how I hold it when I'm in a rush. You 
see two strings were muted that time, and it's different depending on how well you do it each time, but it's very, very hard to consistently hold this bar and get all six strings to sound. There, I just screwed it up again. So if I stop and correct myself, I can push harder in some spots. And then get them all to sound. It takes incredible strength with this finger, and it seems like the easiest time to do it is when you're rested and you just pick up the guitar for the first time for a day of playing. Because the longer you play and fail, and the more you try to correct it, the more you wear your hand out, and then your hand starts to cramp and there's no way you can summon the strength to hold this bar. Well, I was lucky that time. It's very hard to get all of the notes to sound. So, if it's hard to get all the notes to sound when you just sit here and just try to do nothing but do it, it's really going to be hard to get them to sound when you have to play this first. And then, without pausing, switch to that. The movement from here to here is very like spastic. I just took a second to do it, and you're not supposed to take a second to do it. You're just supposed to go zing, and then you're supposed to be over there, and then back, and then over there, and then back, and then over there. And if you lightly touch any of the strings, you're going to mute them. If you're trying to hold a fret here, and you accidentally hold it a little far to the left, you're muting this string. If you hold it too far to the right, you're muting this string. You can't do that. You have to just throw your fingers at the frets and have them stick in the perfect position. And then you have to be pushing down as hard as fuck on this position, or else these two strings are going to be muted, and then they're not going to sound. See, that time this string was muted, and that's funny because this isn't being held as part of a bar. When I play this note, I'm actually holding it here. For some reason, it just doesn't vibrate much when you hold it far up. And it's not consistent either, because this string vibrates a lot, like no matter which position you hold it in. There's not an equal amount of space between the string and the fret for all of the strings and all of the positions, because the bridge gets a little bit bowed in spots. So you have to press the string a lot farther to get to the fret when you're over here than you do when you're like back here. But you have to press the string a lot harder to get it to firmly rest against the fret when you're back here than when you're in the middle. Because it's a lot closer to the end where it's tied off. God, that's fucking awful, and I'm not even trying to sing. I may never get to the part where I'm supposed to sing because I have to make it through eight entire bars of music without fucking up uh, playing this intro. I start with a C chord, and then I do a bar of F, and then uh, back to C, and then a bar of G, and then C, F, C, G. And the whole song pattern is just C, F, C, G, C, F, C, G, C, F, C, G. It never changes between the intro and the actual uh, verses. So I'm spared an entire section to have to memorize, and I only have to play three chords, but I can't do it. And I can't do it because of this fucking F chord. This chord is impossible. See, when you look at old concert footage and you see Jimi Hendrix, like, you know, sliding his hand up and down and playing this chord in all these different positions, and then uh, playing a totally different chord, and then switching back to it and doing rundowns and riffs. And he's just, like, hand syncing it. Because if you actually had to hold this so fucking hard, to like play this chord and get all the strings to sound and like his guitar was hooked up to the amp instead of like the secret computer backstage then no one would be able to do it. All of these guys are frauds, I'm telling you. Like Jeff Beck is a fucking fraud, Eric Clapton's a fucking fraud. How could they play guitar? I think the song should be called No One Can Play Guitar because that would be more realistic. Tom York couldn't play guitar and that's why he decided to write songs about it. I do like his singing voice. Now let's try this one more time. And 
one thing that's neat about guitar is that you can mess up and it's still okay. Like if you're supposed to play... But you accidentally play this. You're sitting there and you just messed up, but your audience isn't going to know that you messed up because you played one of the notes in the chord that you were on instead of a different note. So it sounds to them like, oh, you just decided to go for a different note that time for sake of variety. That's why all those jazz musicians are frauds too. They mess up all the time and get away with it. Jazz is supposed to be about variety. Well, it's really about cloaking the fact that you mess up all the time. That's the truth about that entire genre of music. So far the scientific uh, test about whether anyone can play guitar is, uh, it's not looking very good. And um, I'm going to show you the other part of this song that you need to play, which is almost the same as the first part. But once you start singing, instead of playing, you just play. Yes, yeah, so you play like, you know, uh, the bottom string, middle, up to the top. Now the 4th string, 3rd, 2nd, 5th, 3rd, 2nd, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, bottom, middle, middle, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 5th, 3rd, 2nd, 4th, 3rd, 2nd. Now the same thing. Guitar is all about cheating and uh, making it sound like you're doing something more complicated than you are. And because the strings continue to vibrate after you've let them go, as long as you're not playing every note on the same string by going all the way down here with your fret holding, you can actually make it sound like you're playing all of these notes at once when you're really not. You're just playing one at a time. Well, that's about it for my brilliant rendition of Clay Pigeons, so um, I hope you guys will buy my album. Of course, it's a spoken word album called Why Not To Invest Your Future in Guitar Lessons and Instead Learn Something Useful Like How To Play Video Games Well. That's really it. Oh yeah, and this is uh, how the song is supposed to go if you sing it, which I cannot even think about starting to do while I'm playing the guitar part, so just imagine the guitar part. I'm going down to the Greyhound station, gonna get a ticket to ride, gonna find that lady with two or three kids and sit down by her side. Ride until the sun comes up and down around about two or three times, smoking cigarettes in the last seats. Trying on my songs for the people I meet and get along with it all. Go down where people say y'all. Sing a song for a friend. Change the shape that I'm in. And get back in the game and start playing again. Oh, I'd sure like to stay, but I might have to go to start over again. Might go back down to Texas, might go someplace that I've never been. Wake up in the morning and go at night and now I have to go home. Get used to being alone. Change the words to this song. And get start singing again and playing again and bullshit again and yeah again and never did it in the first place because it's fucking impossible. That's it. Oh, and I forgot a... My favorite part of that song is actually the beginning of the next verse. I'm tired of running around searching for answers to questions that I already know. I could build me a castle of memory just to have somewhere to go. Isn't that sad? You could build a castle of memory just to have somewhere to go because he has nowhere to go in his daily life when he's not living uh, within his memories. That's sort of poetic and cool, and uh, 
it sounds really great if you can actually manage to play the guitar while singing and you actually make it to that part of the song without fucking up. And then all of the ladies love you because you come across as really sensitive and poetic. But the fucking problem is doing it! You can never fucking even make it past the second bar of the intro without cramping up your hand and pausing for five and a half seconds to switch chords and uh, making the audience start clapping because they think the performance is over and you're done with this song when you really you're just trying to switch to the next chord and make sure all your strings are muted. That's it. Thank you very much.